How's it going everyone? It is I, Anime Outlet, and this is part 5 of what if Deku had a regeneration cork. And now, let's begin. It had been a day since the USJ incident, and Izuku and Nezu were now sitting in Nezu's office. So what now, Izuku would say. Nezu would then tell Izuku how he is going to have to recap on all of the things he had missed in just about the span of a month. So Izuku is quite lucky. He just has to cram two months' worth of information into one month, as he is going to be training with Aizawa while the rest of the students are away, since Nezu decided to give the entirety of UA a month off to prepare for the sports festival and to also cover up the USJ incident while also making dorm facilities and more practice facilities for the just the people who go to UA, as he thought it would be much safer. He would also try to upgrade the security system, even though it was already one of the best security systems in all of the world. The only thing they didn't know what to uh, beat it, or what had beaten it, was Kirogiri's cork. It was the one thing that the USJ system and the UA security system couldn't match. It's because a cork like that is so rare, and for it to have fallen into villain hands is just a shame. So Izuku would be sitting in Nezu's office, waiting for Aizawa to show up, as Aizawa would then show up, telling Izuku to follow him, as Izuku would, as... Aizawa would then take him down to a training field, where they would then begin their training. This is where Aizawa would tell Izuku that he is just going to be teaching Izuku the basics of hero training, which is what all of the students had learned. Izuku hadn't missed much, so he didn't really have much to be caught up on. Basically, the first month of UA was just everyone getting used to high school, and like, basically free assignments that everyone knew just to recap their minds on what they had learned before the school they went there. So Izuku would have not had to do any of this, and he would just have to do some of the assignments that the other kids had already done. And he didn't have to do all of them, only some of them, as Nezu thought it would just be putting too much stress on someone who would go from nothing to do to a ton of work to do. So that's what Izuku's schedule would be, just training in the morning, work in the afternoon. And that's how it would go for a month. And Izuku would get a, quite a bit stronger than this. And if you're wondering how Aizawa's cork could work on Izuku's cork, it couldn't work at all. Remember, Izuku's cork cannot be stolen, hidden, it can't be erased or anything like that. So, after the month had passed, Izuku would walk into the UA building, not wearing any uniform. He hadn't been given one, and really, they didn't suspect him of wearing one. This is a kid that would go from wearing whatever the hell he wanted for five years, and would have to be put in a uniform, because... Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, everyone had to, but Izuku hadn't been in school since the age of four, so he really didn't care for a uniform, even though that's what they were basically told they have to wear from the ages early on at the beginning of their school age. So Izuku would just sit down, as Ida would then step up, yelling at Izuku for not wearing his uniform, and asking why the... Heck, he's in their building or classroom, when shouldn't he be in another one? And he should also be punished for not wearing his uniform, of course, because that's just the UA standard. However, Aizawa would walk in right as Ida would start yelling at Izuku, telling Ida to shut up as that Izuku didn't really have to wear a uniform. He wasn't supposed to either as Nezu just wouldn't really care. As Nezu just didn't care what Izuku did that much as long as he just didn't leave the UA built thing or campus because Izuku couldn't leave the campus. He might have been a villain outside of it and sure, Nezu didn't want something like that to get away from his hands, too, so Izuku would have to be forced to stay inside of the campus. If he were to get out, he'd be treated like a villain and would then go to jail, being expelled from UA. So, since that deal Izuku made with Nesu, he's just been forced to stay in the surrounding campus. Now, before the Hearts Festival would begin, these students would be told that dorms had been built and they will now have a week 
off to put all of their luggage and everything like that into the building. Nezu had decided to delay the sports festival a week just so everyone can move into the dormitories and get satisfied with what they had. So the students would get another week off, which would be quite a while, especially for somebody who hadn't been practicing or learning at all, meaning they would get quite rusty and wouldn't be able to use their cork to the fullest con or power that they could have before this. However, Isuku had been training with Aizawa, and since he didn't have any belongings, he could just easily go right into the dormitory and just sit on the blank floor. Everyone was supposed to bring their own beds and all of that, but since Izuku didn't have any parents or any room to get a bed from, Izuku was just supplied with the basic essentials. He had a desk, a couple of pencils, and a bed. That is pretty much it. So Izuku would continue on with his schedule, as Aizawa would continue teaching him. However, it would change. Izuku would have to get used to waking up very, very early to go along with Aizawa's schedule, since Izuku would now have to go into the school building for school, so they're going to have to wake up the train very early before this. So Izuku would do that as he would continue waking up and just training with Aizawa the next week as you would see many kids arrive with moving trucks that would have to be brought in by Nezu who would also have an inspecting team to inspect making sure no villains had gotten onto the trucks, where they would then be able to move all of their furniture and luggage into the room, which Momo of course would have a ton of it, not able to put anything up anywhere, having no storage since they're only dorms, so she would have to throw many of her stuff away. Remember, she comes from a rich family and didn't really have the hardships Izuku would be going through, and she just had a ton of furniture that she had to deal with, and since she was now moving into dorms, her parents just forced her to take all of her just furniture out of her rooms. So Izuku would continue training, just seeing all of this furniture sitting outside as Aizawa would decide to put this furniture to use, making Izuku lift the furniture while Aizawa was sitting on top of it, most likely taking a nap before the school day started. So Izuku would be doing this, basically just getting tons of strength in his arms and legs, whether he was doing just leg push-ups with it or arm push-ups with it, it doesn't really matter. So when that week would pass, Izuku would be ready for the UA Sports Festival. So when all of them were told to go down to the drop-off area for their bus, as they would then pile onto their bus and would begin the one-hour journey to the UA Sports Festival. They had gotten to school at 7 a.m. and the sports festival started at 12 p.m. So they had five hours to prepare themselves mentally and physically. However, Izuku would just be sitting there taking a nap, exhausted from the training he did before. So when he would wake up, they would have a 30 minutes to get down to the drop-off bay and get onto the bus. So Izuku would hurry onto the bus as he would then wait the remainder of the time until the bus would depart from the UA building. As an hour later, they would then arrive at the sports festival coliseum as izuku would then get out to see everyone else walking into another building which aizawa was standing out front of this was the locker rooms it was connected to the sports festival as it it was just another area below the sports festival that had security all around it to make sure none of the civilians or family members got into the locker rooms. So when they would get into there, they would then be separated into boys and girls as they would then get changed with a certain key that Aizawa had given them, which belonged to their locker, as they would then file into their respective locker room, being the class one a room where they would then have to wait until the sports festival would begin. And when it did, Izuku and the rest of Class 1A would be forced to walk out. This is where Bakugo would make his speech, where he would say that he is going to easily win the sports festival, which Izuku, seeing Bakugo's arrogance, would give Izuku a newfound drive to surpass Bakugo and everything he could. Izuku never liked overly confident people, as he never wanted to become one of those either. He had a regeneration cork, so he had every bit of right to be 
overconfident, since he could just regenerate any part of his body that he wanted to. So Izuku had the right to be confident, but he didn't want to become like Bakugo, someone so arrogant he was blinded by it, and would just think everyone is a little pebble in their path, or a little fly they can swat away with the back of their hand. So, when Izuku would hear Bakugo's speech, he would decide there that he was going to humiliate Bakugo in the finals, and he was going to meet him there. So, as the first event would be announced to be a race, Izuku knew he was going to have trouble. He knew he wasn't going to get first, that was for sure, but he definitely wasn't going to get last either. He had been training for this moment, and was quite fast, along with having a great amount of stamina. So, when Izuku would then start to run as the count would start, I'm fumbling with my words here, as the timer would start, as they all had 30 minutes to reach the end of the course, and Izuku, having already lined up with the rest of the people in this small hallway, as the doors would open, midnight yelling go, Izuku would immediately start to sprint off pushing people past. He wasn't going to let his goal be outshined by others trying to surpass him. So Izuku would easily pass these people and would continue on going, as Izuku would finally reach the first obstacle, the Zero Pointer. However, he would see they were already flat on their backs because of Todoroki and Bakugo passing them. So Izuku would continue on sprinting, not wanting to be too far behind, as he would make it to the second event being just the pit of doom. He had to hop from rock to rock to make sure he didn't fall into it, and that's exactly what he would do. Hopping from rock to rock, hoping he didn't fall down into the pit. And once he passed that, he would be met with the minefield. He would see Bakugo and Todoroki already passed him, and that they were going to get either first or second. So he decided he was going to get third, and seeing Todoroki's ice path and looking how thick it was, Izuku decided that he could possibly run on it. And so Izuku would get somewhat of a run up and would then start to slide on the ice, seeing how Todoroki was doing it and mimicking him. As Izuku would learn, he was a pretty good person who could mimic others' actions, as he would then cross the minefield and would get third place in the race, as Izuku would then look around to see Bakugo and Todoroki walking out into one of the big doors. There were amount of doors, or the amount of doors, how many class 1s there were, so I think there it's like class 1A, class 1B, then there's class 1C, class 1D, I believe that's because it's first year and then how high it is, so that's how many doors there would be as Izuku would walk into the door with class 1A written above it, as that would be their waiting room, and they would be forced to wait the remainder of time they had until the race would finish, and to where the next event will then be told and begin. And that's where I'm going to leave it off, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy part 5 of What If Deku Had a Regeneration Cork. I thank you all for watching once again, and goodbye.